Is that how you start the show? I don't know. I don't know. Welcome <laughs> back to the fast break. Brian's not hosting. Oh, oh, I was just about to say, what is this? What's going on? I'm the boss in the back seat, man. I'm like, oh, it's just good to see all of you guys in your different colors, teams you support and teams you don't support, or teams you support because you had other teams more. But anyways, welcome to another episode of Fast Break. We've got our resident um, Golden State Warrior fan, Leslie Teto, our very resident um, Boston Celtic fan in Rufaro Arinda, and our bandwagon fan, resident bandwagon <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> Brian somebody. Oh, why are y'all putting me next to this group? <laughs> Move it out the way. <laughs> Before we go any further, I just want you guys to note that the wearing jerseys of, of point guards at the Celtics who were very unsuccessful. But that's neither yeah. here nor there. I want to give the flowers to the people that deserve the flowers. But before I do that, let's hear from... Okay, Leslie. Let's hear from Leslie and Teta, busy holding up a Steph Curry jersey. <laughs> About what? What do you want to hear? Oh, I want to hear your take on the conference finals and obviously. Oh, you want to hear oh, my on the conference finals? I don't want to stall that man. I don't want to stall that man. I have no shade. I have no beef for the conference finals. Even when you don't have beef, there's plenty beef. That's the problem. Um, uh, Sean, uh, you know, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, I think the Western Conference Finals match up. Uh, I think it was expected. Um, no, no knock on on Dallas. No knock on Dallas. I mean, you 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 can't look at those rosters. And yes, there's always the chance that something amazing can happen in sport. But I think I think Golden State got have gotten healthy at the right time and have actually really they haven't had particularly any struggles going into going into the finals. Um, I think it was definitely expected. Um, shout out to Luka Doncic. I think he really, you know, this season is weird. We would have thought he'd play a little bit better with, you know, a superstar one or one his second best player removed. Um, but congratulations to Luka Doncic on his solid effort. You know, I'm trying to develop and give people that for their effort. You know what I mean? Like it's a thing. You know what I mean? Brian, I'm just saying it's you know a solid I mean? effort. <laughs> it's a solid Bro, effort. Aren't you, but, aren't you a Boston fan today? Yeah, I'm also hey, sure. I'm going to get my section. I'm going to get my section. <laughs> But yeah, man, no, look, I think the Golden State Dallas Dallas matchup was, I mean, I think, it, yeah, I mean, that was kind of a given. I'm no, no, no shade in any direction. Exciting to see what Dallas does next season. Um, exciting signs for Golden State. I think Andrew Wiggins showed that he can be a big X factor for Golden State in different ways. I'm impressed with that um, man. I'm really impressed with that Andrew Wiggins. That, that man and, came through big for them. And there's that weird conversation about the, the defensive thing, and I know Brian, your take on that. But I'm saying, I'm saying that the 17, 18 a game points. That's what I'm saying. Like that's 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 the X factor I'm referring to. Um, Eastern Conference Finals. Woo. You know, I don't even think I'm, I'm. I don't think I'm versed, well versed enough. I don't even think I should go on that one first. I think we need a yell from the person who just closed the game. Then I think Farah should go on that one. But but yo, I had a multitude of emotions. A multitude of emotions. I just, I just want to say this about Boston's journey in general. From and I'm not going to say from the net, um, but I'm going to say Boston's wow. journey in general. It's been a lot of dogs. Like it's been like hard teams. Like really, really yeah, hard teams. Two games every seven. single round. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yo, that's been heavy for them. But I mean, uh, that Brooklyn one, that Brooklyn team was Brooklyn. quite, was quite interesting. Is Go ahead, shots, I love that. Management backstage, or but I mean that's neither here nor there. No black cards today. <laughs> I'm wearing the black cap. I'm wearing the black cap in support of. Brian, uh, you're a uh, trade. I don't even know who you belong to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know good and well who I belong to. Don't even try to act like. Look, on, on Leslie's point, down for Andrew Wiggins, first of all, defensively, Luca averaged 35 points. So I'm not on depth too much on that, right? Because that's 41% shooting. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. But that's better than most guys. Nonetheless, though, Andrew Wiggins had shine just for you. The highest plus minus of everybody in the playoffs. That was his thing, right? That, that's a big thing. But I also do think that offensively, he came through better than any, better than most or more than I would have expected, right? Because that, who he expected Andrew to score more than 10, average more than 10, or 12 even. He really hit some big shots, big moments. You guys thought, Les, you just said the 18 points of big time. You expected this to happen? No, I said. It's a nice, like, it's a nice addition to the team. Like, he's an yeah. uh, X Factor. Why, he's an X Factor. Uh, Brian, why I wish I'd been that? He was an all star this season. 
Storm Storm. Lynch, I still thought he was bad. Don't, I don't want to talk about those All Stars. I don't want to talk about that All Star. And you guys know how I feel about the All Star game. A, you know how I feel about the All Star voting. B, but that's neither here nor wasn't it? Wasn't it? There was someone else that should never have been an author of an author. We'll come back to you. But I'll, I'll, I'll comment on this. But what my point is, though, Andrew Wiggins really was big time for Golden State. He guarded the toughest player and still had enough in the tank to still be available offensively. And obviously, Golden State did what Golden State was going to do. I called Dallas in six, then I called Dallas in seven, then I called Dallas in eight, just hoping for the best. But yeah, man, I, it was. And call, I'm just Dallas, man. I'm just trying to get Dallas up in there. But no, for real, I agree with Ned, right? As much as I might have called Dallas, that would have been a bigger surprise than, that, than, than, than anything else. So I do think Golden State handled their business in the correct fashion. And there was no way that MVP wasn't going to Steph Curry. It always had to be Steph Curry for that fight with Western Cup. Steph Curry had his first MVP, though, in the postseason. That's, that's a shout-out, right? That's a dab, too. He's, he's, he's moving. So, but yeah, shout-out to the man. I think, I think Golden State crazy. What's wrong? Whatever. Just on that, so you, you're going and Steph Curry saying he's got his first um, MVP in the postseason, you're dapping him up, but you undermine Igor Dallas one, you need to give props, mm-hmm. and then you want to also undermine um, Andrew Wiggins because he guarded the best player and kept him to 31% shooting and obviously gentlemen too. There's no consistency. Why? Yeah, I, I, say, I, I can't say I understand, Brian. I can't say I understand. You can't, get a, you can't get finals MVP for guarding the best player. And he averages 35 or 40 points. That's not how it works. On 31% shooting. I thought about Luca and all of Guys, wait, Brian, you know, I don't understand this point about this thing that, you know, with the friend if the other team scores a lot of points. So what you're saying is Tony Allen, um, who else was some top Yo. defenders of, of all time? Like big dudes that, big dudes. Yeah, like, well, are we even, Bruce so Bowen. We're saying, Boston, Boston is a team. Giannis, was, Giannis in this previous series was averaging 30 plus. So we're saying these guys are bad defenders. So if the other teams, if there's a guy from the other team that scores a lot of points, you're not a good defender. So even when your favorite player, you would have thought you're you should have been the defensive player on the team. Are you saying that the, your favorite player in the year, you believe he should have been all defensive player of the season? We'll talk about if LeBron I find Davis one that. guy... If I find one guy that season that scored more than 30, can I say he was a bad defender? For the series, yes. LeBron, LeBron. James guarding KD in, in, in that, what you're that forgetting is also, We're not just saying that Luca averaged 35 points. We're also talking about his, his inefficiency because of the person who was guarding him. Eventually, he's going to score a lot of points if he's taking that many shots. 31%. 41%. Is that 31 or 41? 41. That's still just as bad. That's Russell Westbrook's yeah. I want to give you some comparisons. I want to give you some comparisons. Look, here's what I'm saying, right? I'm saying if you want to give back to the main example where my theory started, for, for lack of a better word, you give Andre Godala an award for guarding LeBron James, and LeBron James averages 40. That award should have gone to Steph. This is the point I've been trying to make for years. He, he didn't do a good enough job at guarding this man because this man still put up bigger numbers. Should have gone to Steph. This year, it went to the right place. Just like how they didn't give it to Andre Wigg- on, uh, Andrew Wiggins sorry, for guarding Luka Doncic and all that great defense. They gave it to Steph because it wasn't just that defensive work that got that win, right? Steph was uh, very, as important now as one of the, that NBA final. That's the point I'm trying to make. They got it right this year. They got it wrong and they gave it to Iggy. That's But yeah, if my guy is averaging 35 points in a series and I want to say I did my job and I guarded him, I don't know about all that. You I'll, do your I'll job because you, you guys at home and you, you're not at home. You're still on the That's your Milwaukee reference, right? When Giannis averaged 31 against Boston, there was a wall there. There was no primary one-on-one defender. When Giannis would drive, there would be a charge. There would be a, there'd be a wall of dudes trying to draw a charge. It wasn't just a one-on-one matchup. Andrew Wiggins and Luca, that was one-on-one. That was a primary defensive play. That's why there I can easily say Andrew Wiggins didn't do a great job at guarding Luka Doncic. He that, did a good enough job to send Luca home. Isn't that what matters most? Yeah. That's now, that's true. Ask, Brian, who's a good defender? LeBron James. You asked the question. I gave you an answer. Who's a good defender? Giannis, Kawhi Leonard, Andrew, um, Draymond Green, my mistake. Um, big man from Utah, Gobert. Those are great defenders. Marcus Smart's a good defender. And those I, guys that get 30 dropped on them. 
This is a series, so anyone can get 45 in a game. This is a series. I'll find the if series. Curry ever I'll find the series. But Brian, what you're lacking is consistency. What consistency? Because a you series. don't say Marcus Smart is a good defender, which he is, I believe he is. But you're going to say how oh, Giannis dropped 40 something, um, Butler dropped 40 something on him. But then you're going to disregard the fact that Andrew Smart Wiggins wasn't gone also. <sighs> Was he? I mean, I'm trying to. I don't know about you guys, but I want to hear somebody who actually analyzes the Celtics, goes deep within the Celtics, speaks about the turnovers, the culture, talking about an oh African coach who's first to be in the NBA Finals. Let's hear from the actual Boston Celtics like, fan like, from Game One to Game Eighty Two, and all the other ones in the postseason. <laughs> <laughs> what to take for? Uh, opening statement: uh, Defense wins championships. That's that's that that's. You haven't won the championship. I say defense wins championships, not all right? And to I'll address I'll address the Wiggins thing and the and the whole Luca thing quickly because these are some very Western conference takes. I've actually realized that oh my things, <laughs> things work things and I promise you, like things work very differently in the West. And like I'm glad that the Celtics are considered underdogs going into the finals because I just don't think people are ready for the type of game that we play. I know people say we're the, we're the best defensive team in the NBA, but what does that really mean? And I don't think anyone here has experienced that firsthand. If we're going to talk about, if we're going to talk about defensive 2020, bro. Right? Hold on, bro. Hold on. We're going to talk about defensive efficiency, right? The fact that Luca goes 41% field goal percentage for me is great defense on whoever was guarding his part, on Wiggins' part. And I say that for, for one or two reasons, right? In big, big matchups, you're going to trust your franchise player to carry you over the line. You're going to trust that dude to get you buckets. So if he's scoring 41%, it odds are the rest of the team is now scoring or averaging 41%. You're not going to win the game scoring 41% field goal averages, bro. And that's how we beat Giannis. Giannis dropped 30, 40 on us consistently, but... The Bucks lost because he was now averaging, where he was used to averaging 67% in the previous finals. He was now averaging in the mid to low 40s, touching 50s, you know? So that's the thing. In this Miami oh, series, though, in this Miami series, though, I feel extremely humbled because the, the, the two previous series before that, I saw how good my team can get. But in this Miami series, I just saw how bad we can be and if i look at it and give you the perspective of, of us going against golden state in the finals i think our best punch is better than golden state's best punch but i don't know if we can hit our best punch consistently enough to take them out and that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbles however who's your best punch? who's your best punch on that point that's what I, before we go too far no. your punch? he meant as our a best. Best. Brian doesn't understand yeah, what as a collective. He's saying it, the yeah. Celtics' best. <laughs> these, Le, these LeBron boys, bro. God these damn. LeBron guys. This has these nothing LeBron to do with LeBron. When you address these things, address <laughs> Brian. Do not say these LeBron boys. Address Brian and his well takes. <laughs> Let's just put it out there. So, I mean, I'm obviously going to touch on something. You have seen, um, obviously, the NBA world has been buzzing over some legacy chats because of what this potentially means. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Without giving up too much or giving up any of my opinions, I want to hear from you guys what it would mean, obviously, for a Boston Celtics championship, where that would put um, Jason Tatum, especially in the conversations of all the young guys. And should he fail, to, should they fail to get that, where does that leave him to? Because he's already achieved, he's got the Larry Bird Eastern Conference MVP. And on the other hand, also, what does this mean for Steph Curry? Because I think this has probably been his best output in terms of his, for his team in the postseason. And if they are to win, he looks like he's about to get his first finals MVP. So, to you, Les, what does this Andrew mean? Andrew will be back for the finals. Andrew will won't play the finals. So, that's, you know, he might get his second. Brian, Brian, the wildest thing is you're giving us an extra wing defender. And we need it here. <laughs> we need it here. But no, guys, like, let's, and the legacy chat, I think, is a real thing. Let's talk about who has the most to lose here. And gain, to be honest. And I'm going to start with Boston because I think there is, I think the story there is a lot more romantic. Imo Donka, Black Lives Matter. I mean, first season as a head coach. Oh my goodness, he's going to just be like on some other tip. It's going to be so much dabs for him. I think that that'll. And the, be a and the culture, bro. And the culture. Yeah, hey, no, right. 
I know y'all, man. I was respect of Gilman. That's coach. Coach, that coach. <laughs> so and then, as and then I do think. Look, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, all those guys, and even withstanding the fast break slaughterhouse of years, where we were talking a lot of stuff about those dudes finding a way to keep the core guys together. Al Horford leaving and coming back, and then them realizing, oh, we didn't need Kyrie, we didn't need Isaiah, we didn't need Kemba Walker. Actually, all we needed was us and our hearts, and maybe Ima Donko. I don't know, and but Marcus I think for, I, and Marcus Smart. But I think Boston have the most to add them into like conversations now, um, and and the Jason Tatum aspect of it. Shine, I don't know where he goes, right? So he might get a Finals MVP and obviously a championship. And then he probably sits in a similar conversation or exact same conversation as what I talk about for Paul Pierce. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to elevate him anywhere beyond. I mean, I, I don't know which young guy he could take yeah. out. So, so that's as far as I'd take that. And then for Golden State, for me, Steph has the most to lose. Yeah, it's the second championship to equal having two without KD. It's also the championship that everyone believes he's going to try and get a finals MVP. But obviously, as a personal fan, culturally, I believe they need to win it more than Steph needs to get the finals MVP. I think that that is critical. But on that, in the same breath, I don't know who Marcus Smart's going to guard. But if Steph's primary defender is not constantly Marcus Smart, he, he should be able to, of course, play well, to be able to get the finals MVP. Both are gonna switch it again. Again, again, this is this is this is why this is why I'm loving the takes here because these are such Western Conference takes, bro. Uh, wait, Faro, you know, before you continue, I just want to <laughs> what, say what, what you like this. Yo, this this what East West beef, this East West beef getting a little bit heavy. Boston makes a first final <laughs> after 12 years, and then Western Conference chats. Eastern I Conference. Know, I don't even know. Chat, finish, finish up, finish up, and I'll chat. Let me just finish up. In a very simple way, though. But, I mean, yeah, legacy-wise, I think Golden State have the most to lose. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I really just think it would be all on Steph Curry. I don't think anyone would look in any, any other direction. But I think the most romantic story of the finals would be if Boston won because, yeah, I mean, they've, they've probably... Both of these teams have managed to keep together a core of guys for a number of years, and I think that that's quite special. Um, but I mean, look, I know that everyone stands to lose the most though, uh, in terms of like any other fans, if Golden State wins, this is going to be a tough time for a lot of people. I know that it's going to be tough. If I can, if oh, I can just oh. say something before Brian says this, um, do you feel, Brian, I know where you're headed with this. Does it hurt your favorite player or your favorite team knowing that the two teams in the finals not only have kept their core, but have also exploited massive contributions from younger guys and have a very young, a much younger team. So... In essence, they look to be successful for the next few years. For a long time, man. Uh, yeah, dog, you can expect Boston to be around for a long time. Faro was saying this, Faro, I saw, I've been watching your, your timeline for a while and you can't even escape me. Faro yesterday was saying, look, trade JB. We're done with this. Let's, I don't know if I was yesterday or the day before game seven. Let's pack it in. Let, and he was right if they got eliminated yesterday. I think going forward, Win or lose, whether it's a sweep, whether it's in seven, Boston got to stay the exact same way they are and we pick up a few pieces. But they call, they, they, everyone up until Al Horford and those kind, maybe Jafar likes Pritchard as well, maybe you keep Pritchard too, but I think the core has to stay the same because these guys really can. I think they, there's something to be, and JT is coming into his own, but he's not just playing well or he's not just hitting, he's not just having a good stretch. He's, even in his bad games, he's finding ways to come through. He's finding ways to the line, finding ways to hit some big shots. So I really like what JT has come for the team. And I think Boston should stay how they are, irrespective of what happens. Like, same thing with Golden State. I don't think they need to change much. And they also have James White now on the bench, still trying to recover. So them as well. Yo, Andre Godala coming back, Gary Payton Jr. coming back. I think going to be bad in that, in that NBA final. But, but to answer the first question, I think for me personally, this doesn't, impact. And Steph Curry's ghost is my, not his ghost, but Steph Curry's chasing Magic Johnson, right? Whether he wins or loses, he doesn't go above him, he doesn't go below him, in my opinion. I think he stays right where he is, and that's how I feel about Boston as well and Jason Tatum. Sure, he'll get an MVP and a, fight and, and a championship, but I don't think that propels him into the top 50 or the top. I don't think that leap is going to be that big. His play, though, this season is what's propelling him into 
the top half of the NBA, well, the top 10 in the NBA. There were some questions about him and Booker even being top 10 this season. He's certified, bro. Whether he wins or loses, the outcome notwithstanding, he's certified in that top 10. I don't know who's going to be out of it, but I think JT and them are for real. So for me personally, I just I don't think it's got too much of an impact on either legacy, win or lose, but I agree with Liz. This is more important for Steph's legacy than it would be to tarnish Jason Tatum and Liz, because they're still a whole lot younger. Yeah. And with yeah. how wide open the NBA and the competitors have been, who's to say it'll be this, you know, this wide open next season or for, for both sides? Who's to say Chris Middleton will be out for that? This and that team might struggle here and there. So I think it's, it's, it's these teams are going to be around for a while. I think, I think both of them could show up in the, in the finals again next year. That's how good they Go ahead, Farrell. Go ahead, Farrell, Farrell, still alive where you froze. I don't know. He's on that Eastern Conference. He's on that Eastern Conference time. Eastern Conference data. They get to the finals late. They can't even close out a game before, Farrell. Oh gosh! Hey, not not us, my brother. We can't say these things, but us. We're not <laughs> so, hey, so look, I'm, you, I'm in Cancun. I'm a neutral person. I can say whatever I want to say. <laughs> so, what are you asking ahead, me bro. to address now? What are you asking me to address now? So the legacy one, pick, I think. I think the legacy one is being picked both ways. Look, for me, I think it's very disappointing to hear guys say that Jason Tatum, out of the young guys, you don't know where this would put him. For me, it puts him essentially right up there. And I think out of the young guys in the NBA, for me, he goes right up there, right next to Luca. I'd even put him above Luca based off of the, the, hey. the performance that happened. Oh, and, 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 and for one, and for one of two reasons, and for one of two reasons, Jason Tatum has been to the conference finals a heck of a lot of times, right? And he's been there with a core not being led by anybody else, essentially. He's always been that guy on the team and he's had that responsibility on his shoulders for a very long time. He's 24 years old. Let's not forget that. Jason Tatum is 24 years old and he's carried this team now to the NBA finals after multiple attempts getting to the actual conference finals where they had no business being there, really. And trusting in this core where you've asked the Kyrie Irving to come in and it hasn't worked out. You've had a Kemba Walker come in and it hasn't worked out. But he's always been that guy, right? And you realize very quickly that this is somebody who's been very underrated. But I think in this series, he will have that breakout performance where I think people will be like, win or lose, that's the guy. And he's going to be the guy for a while. If we can keep this core, get him his max, right? Brian's right. I tweeted about um, us shafting uh, Jalen Brown because... Bro, when you've, been a, when you've been a Celtics fan for as long as I have, and you've gotten to the conference finals as many times as we have in the previous, in the past few years, and you keep falling at that hurdle, something needs to give. And especially... And you're not going to trade like, like, one of them. Yeah, right? yeah. And especially in that Miami series, I wasn't, I wasn't happy because I felt like the team just fell short way too many times. And it's, and it's things that are fundamentals of the game where we fell off now before i before i get into into the weeds with that analysis i want to hear from you guys right i want to hear from you guys what type of shot you think boston has in the finals before i give you my full analysis first i think I boston think... has a legitimate chance in the finals we can't write off what they've done in the playoffs like teams have knocked out in the playoffs even before the playoffs started they turn around time I mean, they turn around, so be becoming second in the Western Conference, in the Eastern Conference, beating the team that was number one, beating the Nets, sweeping them. There's no way you can say that these guys do not have a real chance at this, you know, like, it's a real shot. Although I think Golden State has a bit of an edge over them, I still can't just write out this Boston Celtics and make it seem like it's going to be a walk in the park, you know, and that's, that, that's just that's what it is. Amazing. That just sounds like you're giving them a chance because they made the finals, not because they actually might be but a I better matchup. But I told you what I think. They have a legit chance. I told you why. But, go, how many games? Golden State and how many games? Though? I was still Warriors and six. Oh, fair. That's not bad. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Can I? Who has home court? This final uh, Boston. Boston. Uh, no. Golden State. Golden Boston, State's yeah. gone home court. It's delicious. I love it. Who has home court? First two, Golden, State State Golden, State has home court. Golden State has home court because of the, 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 the regular season record. Golden State got 53 wins, Boston oh. got 51. Oh, okay. okay. So the first two games oh, then, are down in the bank. 
Okay, so I mean, Golden State haven't lost a game in the playoff at home. They have the Ever, best offensive, yeah. yeah. They have the best offensive rating in the playoffs. Uh, Boston have the best offensive rating in the playoffs. I Golden State have the championship pedigree. It's like the first season when Golden State made it to the finals. You know, I don't think many people were sure, but I think all things considered, and now not knowing that what I know about the to confirm on the home thing. I definitely think uh, Golden State in six. Um, I think there'll be some tight games, but I, I, I feel Golden State just have more things that that are going to align with what they're looking for. And I, I just I don't I don't trust that Boston will be consistent. I don't trust a single player at Golden State to be consistent, but I trust that every game there'll be mm-hmm. one guy in the team that will play really well out of his out of his socks. Yeah, and no, that's what I, Boston, that's what I can trust. This is where Boston loses me, right? The previous, there were too many games where Boston. You want to take off the shirt first before you say this? Oh no 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 no! I'm Boston. I'm, I'm, I'm with Boston. <laughs> I can hold it up too. If you like. There were too many games in this uh, conference final where they turned the ball over like mad, unforced turnovers. Mm-hmm. Too many times that, where they that's what was saying. put themselves in a position to lose the game. So I think if Boston loses this this NBA championship, it will fall on the games where they hurt themselves. They can steal one or two, but they can also give away the same one or two that they might win. So I think, I, I think Boston has a 50-50 chance. It's like 49-51. They may not be ridiculous. Boston has never been in the NBA Finals. Um, Boston has never, they don't have the experience that, that Golden State has. And Golden State is less inclined to make this many unforced errors. But Boston defensively, my only issue is these unforced errors. But I would like to go Boston in six, mm, seven, Boston in seven. That's that's what I that, that's my call and that's how much I think. I think Golden State is a better team. Golden State has a bigger star. Golden State has the best way to score the ball. But Golden State just have less unforced turnover. I just think that the story behind Boston and how hard they've worked and I think the, the amount of them being where they are right now, it kind of feels like they have to do it this year. They they kind of they've pushed through they've pushed through Miami, they've pushed through Milwaukee, they've pushed through Brooklyn. They've had the toughest road to the NBA Finals, and I think that. I don't know if it's about the story or whatnot, but I think I'm, I, I, I give Boston a legitimate shot and I'm calling Boston in seven. So, guys, guys, I wait, guys if, it came to, hey, guys, if it came down to one game, I'm, I'm going to tell you for free 99. No, it depends on what game. Game no, seven. No, Brian, against... no. I'm saying, I'm saying one game. What I'm saying is, like, if it's a game seven, that's the only way it would be one game. I'm saying in that scenario, I'm telling you, I don't know. What, I, the answer for me there is, I don't know. Because. On the fence? I think what a game seven requires is just a, I'm, I, but my savior and hope would be Clay, so unpredictable, bro. I'm so unpredictable saying, in a game seven. God, no, Man. but but, but I, I I think I think Boston have the the type of guy I believe in that scenario thrives a bit more. I think they have a guy that's played more in that climate. I think for Golden State, the guy I rely on in that game seven would be Clay. Obviously, Clay has played in two close up games, clocked but I think if that happens, I think that's a big span in but the work. Just, but I, just believe that, I, I believe Golden State will take take care of it in six. That's I think, they'll also, just, I think they'll just win all their home games and get the hell out of there. That's really and right. then just get done. Yeah. yeah, it's like oh, well, let's win everything because TD Garden is going to be aggressive. I just don't see TD Garden being a nice place to play at any under any circumstance for the season. Golden State and Boston have both beat each other, and they both beat each other away. They both beat each other away from home. So, but just I, just to also say that I mean, we can say that these Boston Celtics are very tough when it comes to step to the to the to Game Seven, but we mustn't take away from the resilience of Warriors. If you remember in 2016, they were three one down to OKC, and they had some pretty big games as well to to close out that KD and um and what's what's his name KD and Russell Westbrook. Right. So Westbrook both games teams have, have, both have teams have that. Have that thing, you know they, what I'm saying? To be able to, to close it out. Finals, by the way, they couldn't close out for three one after they closed out for three one. Just a side note. Okay, I'm ready to give my take now. I'm. It ain't, I'm listening. It ain't no special. This ain't no like Netflix <laughs> special. <laughs> Just like I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to give my take now. You take what we had to go at it. Everybody yeah. had to add at it. I right, need to give we my put take. put you in the oven. Cook, nigga, cook. <laughs> Right. The Miami, the Miami series did disappoint me for a number of reasons. Be- the, and those reasons are, 
yes, Boston can be in, inconsistent, but it's the things that they're inconsistent with or that they were inconsistent with that bothered me a lot. And those were turnovers, not really running the ball, not making free throws, right? Those are things that kill you. And, and for me, it was disappointing. And this is a series where talent-wise, we were much better than the Heat. The Heat were hobbled um, early on. Yeah, Jimmy, but- yeah. Jimmy Butler was getting his, but we could have closed that series out very, very quick. However, now this is a big class determining factor. I'm happy that it Jimmy happened. Butler, you ever have caught him over that too, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy that it happened in the conference finals and we got through and not now in the finals because I would have literally been on suicide watch, right? And there are two Never things. Too late. Okay. And there are two things. There are two things. I feel like Miami plays, they over guard in the lane and they played a lot of bite defense, right? And they got our stars on that double team and stripping guys in the lane. In game seven, I feel like we learned how to manage that a lot better. And one thing we did that we did not do before was push the ball in transition. So all of a sudden, the Boston Celtics are now making adjustments in the, play, in the playoffs, right? The big thing with the Golden State Warriors, and this is how we beat them. We know that they have lethal weapons um, on the perimeter, and our switch defense on that three-point shot is going to be crucial. We cannot play drop coverage against Jordan Poole against Andrew Wiggins, against Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson. We have to play that switch defense well. If we get over that screen and we get to the shot in time, so be it. But we're going to have to play switch defense. And I think that's going to help us a lot more because Jordan Poole is lightning quick off the dribble. We know this. Steph can pull up from anywhere. Clay can be an intense spot-up shooter. But I think where we will eat is in the paint. I feel like the guy that we need to target and we need to be purposeful in this is Draymond Green. Draymond has to deal with Rob Williams, Al Horford, and Grant Williams for the entire series. That is the guy that you're going to target. I don't care about singular matchups. I don't care about Marcus Smart can guard Steph. I don't care about... They're all these guys, and we don't, we don't play yeah, one-on-one. That's, one. that's, that's not the game. Is that's the key though for the series. Draymond just being in some trouble. Yeah. If Guys, we attack, didn't Draymond Golden State in the play in the second round? Yo, anybody even know about that? Yo, why? Let's check for you. What my mind? On for now. I don't know, bro. These matchups. I don't John Morant and his Grizzlies. Oh, we John Morant and his Grizzlies. Okay, now nah, well, I'm just trying they to. They played the Suns, dude. Didn't they play the Suns? No, that was Dallas. And that was that Dallas. Was no, the reason I was asking is because Farah's point is about Draymond Green honestly guarding him forwards. I mean, look, I think the MVP of this league, um, Jokic, was, was, you know, a handful for Draymond. And by no means did he guard him. But, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if I. And I'll tell you why. There's also Javon yeah, Lugie who was big time in some of the games they won. 100%, and he's been crucial on offensive boards as well. But the reason why I say Draymond Green is because of the physicality aspect. I love the fact that the first two games are down at Golden State because those are the games you go down there, smack them in the mouth. I remember, I remember in series when we, played the, when we played the Bucks and when we played against Miami, right? These are guys that came at us with physicality. These guys hit us. They smacked us in the mouth. And there's a, there's, a, there's, there's a trend in the East that we had to deal with of guys getting punked in games, right? And I feel like the physicality aspect with Golden State, you go there, punch, like hit them in the mouth, dude. Play physical, get that game, steal one. That's all I ask of you. Just go down there and steal one. And it's very doable because I feel like in the first, in the first game, it'll be very difficult for them to make the adjustments. And if we push the ball in transition like we did, in this previous series, I really don't see them being able to stop us getting inside. I think the defense will always show up for us. I think we played <laughs> championship caliber defense throughout the playoffs, right? And that's something that's just constantly overlooked when when you get when we get to the stage because it's more glamorous for guys to make shots. But the only reason we won last night against Miami is because in the from the eleven from the from eleven minutes to go up until six minutes to go, we managed to get the stops that we needed. Al Horford getting blocks at the rim. Elite, elite rim protector. Guys blocking three-point shots. Derek White has children to play. Like, I love 
I love sitting in the in the underdog seat because all these no. puzzled looks are exactly where we need to be as the Celtics because okay. I felt like these in that series look going look into Boston, Boston when we played I'm sorry, you like you like sitting in the underdog seat because you don't want to take the heat when you lose. Yeah. No, I was about to say the same thing. No, 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 no. no that's you know, that's rubbish. I will say no, this. Okay. I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm hold reasonably on. Hold scared. On. Hold on. Go ahead, Far. Go back to the Brooklyn series where everybody watched over. <laughs> and that's the mentality that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have because they play better when they're overlooked. When we were told or when, when it was put into our heads that we were, were so much better than Miami talent-wise, I felt like there was a, a certain amount of complacency that was irritating and annoying because we ended up giving up games and giving up looks like that. Giannis, previous champion, we know that that was going to be tough. We were still overlooked and that was going to be a tough matchup. People still back, back the box, right? Going into Golden State, again, they're going to be overlooked. And I feel like that's the perfect place for them to be. This team needs to be in that space where they're fighting and they, and they constantly have that dog mentality. And with Golden State, you, we know you can't relax. This is the NBA Finals. And they know that. Trust me, they know that this is the NBA Finals. Who's the favorite to win the series? I'm asking you now. Who's, who's the favorite to win the series? The favorite is Golden State, no, but I'm saying Celtics and seven. By far. Is it Golden State by far or is it light? No, not by far. And and it's it's I don't know if for for for, and and for me like to even say state and six right means that you've got to come down to the garden a considerable number of times and take the dub because you have so the garden is not the most protected fortress in the NBA right a hundred percent but then Golden State and six literally means they win the first two games you win they lose lose in Boston. So, so, so we're, we're okay. So we're there, not. So we're not. And they win. So we're not getting. So okay. So we're not getting those uh, one one on the road. Even though we beat Miami three times out of four on the road this past season. So do, do you, who do you think is a better team, Miami or Golden State? Miami. <laughs> oh my. Who do you God. think is a better team, Miami or Golden State? You know what, guys? You know what, guys? You think Miami is a better team than Golden data. State? You know what, guys? A hundred percent in the playoffs. No one beaten Golden State at all. Hundred percent. Yeah, but, 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 but look at but look at but look at the play. Look at the run of teams that you've had to play leading up to this. You haven't played a team like Boston Celtics yet this season in the, in the playoffs. You haven't. You but really you haven't played a team like the Warriors as well. You dude, you haven't played That's a team. No, 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 no. We've played tough teams, bro. We played Brooklyn. Warriors is tough. You're the undermining the played, defensive rating. I'm not. I'm not undermining them. But what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. The Boston Celtics have had tougher matchups coming up to this. And for everyone to assume Faro, just be because honest. Golden State Faro, hasn't lost the game at I, home. You and I, you and you and my Boston Celtics, my brother. Brooklyn, they barely scraped through into the NBA playoffs. Milwaukee didn't even have your boy Chris Middleton. Miami, they were hobbling without your without Kyle Lowry. And you know what? So we're what always gonna have be. excuses. And that, and, and you that said that's thing, that, that, I feel that's like that's not such a I feel like that's such a disrespectful take to take, bro, because those teams were still formidable. Still formidable. For you to say that Brooklyn... No, no, no. No, no, no. For you guys to say that Brooklyn barely scraped into the playoffs when they're playing with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Because we swept them, we made it look easy. But there's no way. They still had Seth Curry. Can I just... All I'm going to say... This is my crazy statement, because... You I'm, mentioned I'm the wrong Curry I'm brother, quiet. bro. No, I'm going to be quiet. No, no, I'm going to be quiet no, after no, this. I'm going to no, be done no. after this. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Far. Golden State Warriors have not played a team like the Boston Celtics yet. And there's going to be a rude awakening. I'm so sorry. I'm done. Okay. I, no, go ahead. Can I say just about the underdog conversation, man? I, you know, I, I don't. I, everyone keeps saying that Golden State or that Golden State are not the underdog. They're in fact the favorite. I, I don't think you could offer me any legitimate reason why. You, you, we, and in fact, leaning towards your point, Faro, we haven't beat some tough teams. Um, Golden State are actually hobbled. We have like three key guys out. Um, I mean, what are the other reasons that we're not the favorite? We don't have Kevin Durant who carried us to our two championships. What are the other, like, like there's so oh, many, oh, there's oh, so oh, many oh, good oh, reasons. Oh, there's so James many Weisman. good reasons. There's so many good reasons to actually say the fav- and we didn't finish second on our conference. You guys did. I mean, I, I, I must yeah. say, it, 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 yeah, 
Well, Brian, I don't know what to tell you now because people finish second in their conference. I can't. I'm, in my conference, I couldn't finish second. In my conference, we couldn't. All of this is four one. Yes, I'd like the, to. The, 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 the main point. The, the main point I'm trying to get to is the main point I'm trying to get to is the whole favorites thing. I think is a little bit weird. I particularly don't feel there's any. The only thing that would say to me a favorite are the two things I asked about: home court, and I think that the championship experience of Golden State. Those are the only two things, and not and I mean home court. Faro just gave us tons of information about why his team can beat teams at home, and championship pedigree. I mean Kyrie Irving and. And, and Kevin Durant have that, and they took an owl, and so did Giannis. So all I really want to say about a lot of what you just said about the underdog mentality of it all, I don't believe if those guys need a certain climate to play mentally, I just think that that's still a knock on Boston. I think if people say they are the favorites, or if people say they're actually better than Golden State, they should be able to close it out. If they win these first two games, everyone's going to change their language. Boston's a much better team. It just has to be that you're going into the game. And the difference culturally here is that there is no mentality you have to talk about of how Golden State are going to approach this finals. Favorites, not favorites. They're just going to play the game because they, they're just, it, it's just a basketball team. No one needs a certain mindset to approach. They don't need the media to say certain things. They're probably one of the least criticized teams in the media. I'll be honest. Golden State, no one ever says anything rude about them. Um, even I just, I, I, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying that my, my main criticism about the underdog thing is it just, it makes me think that if you guys go into a game three after being 2-0 up and the media starts to say something good about you, you're saying I must come back on the show and say, guys, I still feel good about Golden State's chances because now people are not calling them the underdog. And I don't think that's <laughs> anything. That's, I think they got it all out in, in the previous series. I think the fact that we got out the conference finals after, the, you literally can't do much more wrong if you're the Boston Celtics. You don't have to look far. The, we own, the only reason we're here, the only reason we're here is because Max Struess's heel was literally grazing the out, the out of bounds line last night. Baro, and Baro, 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 did you rewatch that play? Did you rewatch that play? Baro, his, foot, his foot was on the line. Dude. His foot was on the line. <laughs> Kobe once had a shot like that as against the Sacramento Kings. His heel was, 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 was just elevated and, above the touchline. Like, ah. Yeah. And even if you don't take that play into account, there's a play where Bam Adebayo gets a rebound. He literally steps outside. Like, he steps outside, yeah, out of bounds, comes back in, and he scores mm-hmm. and he scores a bucket, and that play never gets reviewed. So that's my rebuttal. The my only one to me that counts is if it happens in the last two seconds. Otherwise, during the game... I don't count those missed calls or take back seas or I, I don't think those are real. Two person. That's it, in my opinion. Go ahead, Farah, jump in there, man. Finish up. Yeah, man. So that, that's all. But this sorry, you still guys, haven't but... said Boston in how many? I said, oh, seven. Said, seven. I said Boston, I said Boston in seven. seven. I said Celtics in seven. So we've got Boston in seven from Farah, from Brian, Boston in six, seven. I said seven. No, I'm seven, yeah. You guys are both. Leslie is saying states in six. I'm saying states in six. Well, we'll have to, to see what, what unfolds here. But, I mean, thank you very much again, guys, for a good episode on Fast Break. We'll be well, no, checking Before you shut it down, it's just got to be stated that uh, Kevin Durant left Golden State in the finals. Kyrie Irving left Boston in the finals. Shout out to the Black Hearts in him. Shout out, shout out to, to Boston and Black Hearts, man. But, so uh, much shade. They're doing it without so thing. A real thing. Just, a real thing. Just, <laughs> just, yo, yo, yo. A real thing. If Golden State, remember how you guys, I used to talk smack about Golden State couldn't do it without KD, they won one, they lost. If Golden State do this without him, I've been wrong for years. I've been wrong for years. But nothing's and years. new, Brian. You've been wrong about a lot of things. You've been wrong, you've been yeah, wrong about a lot of things. You've been wrong about yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, sure. Let's choose. Let's go with that. But if, if, if Golden State pull this through, I'll, if they lose, though, oh, y'all better mute me. Oh, y'all better mute me because I'm going to come for every single one of you. One by hey, one. Hey, 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 hey. Anyway, I'm not here to fulfill Brian's agendas. I just I need am... a championship. It's been too long since 08. God damn. I am, and yes, and, I like and shout play. out to Tatum for playing for Kobe last night. There was no way we were going to lose. Hey, hey. With you know, with you know, Kobe, name of that's why, that's why he's coming to the Lakers. Lakers. That's why you're coming to the Lakers one day. No, that's why we were there. Also, how do you wear? I understand Kobe's your favorite player. But you but have why is he you wearing have to, a Lakers colors with a Boston Celtics jersey. That I don't know. 
Some of the guys are guys are guys are guys you guys, you ask, you ask me to worry about freeing up cap space with Russell Westbrook. You got 47 million that you, you got. Five, yeah. So you got to focus on that. As soon as JC Supermax is done, he'll come to the Lakers in his prime. And you can worry about, about us in months to come. You got to worry about the next two weeks first. Don't worry about us yeah, happening in months from now. Cancun. I can I I'm Cancun. Ready for, let's, let's I'm, ready, I'm very ready for anything that Brian has to say post these finals because, you know, he either has to criticize someone who lost in the finals or he has to, you know, dap someone who's won in the finals. And both ways. I'm a, both can be true. <laughs> both ways. Both can it's be true. Both can be true. I'm a both both both. Be true. I'm a critique and I'm a dap. There'll always be Black Jesus. Number two. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thanks a lot, guys. Brian, you can go ahead and finish that drink. Please like, share, it's subscribe. Monday. <laughs> it's Farrow, it's I'll see you, Farrow, I will see you on Thursday. I might have to join you. See all on Thursday morning. We're watching it live, homie. Shout out. It's Friday morning. I got you. Be there.